Hello all. You all know about the structure of an atom. If anyone asks you, what is the atomic structure all about? So the first thing which could strike your mind is, it consists of electrons, protons and neutrons, right? You are also aware of the thing that atoms have tendency to have eight electrons in their outermost shell. In this particular video, I'll make you understand why atoms need eight electrons in the outermost shell. What is the criteria or what is the justification behind that? Let us find it out. If we consider electrons, electrons in an atom exist in the form of standing waves. You can see how the standing waves are like on your screen. So simple example of standing wave could be understood by considering a vibration of a string which is tied across the ends. So when do we say a standing wave is formed? If a wave oscillates with a correct frequency, that means the reflected wave match up with each other, right? So as you can see the solid portion there, the darker one, that is an oscillation in the forward direction and the reflected oscillation in the backward direction which is shown by the lighter uh, like pen portion of that. So that exact frequency matching between both of them, the reflected as well as the original oscillating frequency, then we would say a standing wave formation takes place. This is the basic concept of spherical harmonics. Now spherical harmonics deals with the three dimensional concept. Now electron when I say exist within an atom, it definitely, you can understand the existence of an electron within the three dimensional space with reference to an atom, right? So it has to obey all the criteria given by spherical harmonics, then only we can say that particular electron would be stable within that atom, okay? Let us see it one by one. So electrons in an atom form three dimensional standing waves right and this could be justified by saying that electrons are confined to an atom by their attraction towards the nucleus. Therefore, the states of electrons which can maintain this harmonics or maintain this condition can only be stable and will be part of that shell. Are you able to understand? So electron which can form three dimensional standing waves would be confined to that particular atom due to its stable attraction towards the nucleus and because of this it would become a part of the shell otherwise that electron won't be existing okay that's the first case so since we are talking about the shell what quantum number justifies the existence of shell that is with reference to your principal quantum number this uh, symbol is n. See this electron states are grouped into the shells on the basis of quantum numbers and the basic quantum number behind them is the principal quantum number. So the possible spherical harmonics says that the principal quantum number can have any positive integer value. It could be positive integer value that means n is equal to 1, 2, 3 and so on. So when I say n is equal to 1, it signifies first shell, n is equal to 2 means second shell and in that way, okay. So it's basically the average distance from the nucleus. That's about shell. After shell, we can consider what are subshells. Now these shells are broken down into various subshells. Each electron in a subshell is in a standing wave and they have the same angular quantum number, right? What is this angular quantum number denoted as? It is denoted as L, small l, okay? So what we are up to? First we said principal quantum number will justify the number of shell in which your electron would be existing and then the cells which are further subdivided into subshells and the subshells are judged or they are having their explanation with reference to a next quantum number known as an angular quantum number. So this angular quantum number helps us to understand the shape of that standing wave. 
okay again spherical harmonics set limitations on what is a stable configuration with reference to angular quantum number so it says l can be either greater than or equal to 0 but it cannot be less than n so if this condition has been obeyed by that particular electron then it could be part of that respective subshell let us take an example for this in third shell there are three subshells and the angular quantum number values would be l is equal to 0 1 and 2 right so for the three subshells this would be the possible quantum numbers angular quantum number values now as far as the name of the subshell is given when l is equal to 0 we say it is an s subshell l is equal to 1 p l is equal to 2 d subshell l is equal to 3 f subshell and then the alphabetical sequence follows in this way okay after that the next criteria for understanding this concept is with reference to the orbitals so the subshells are further broken down into various orbitals and this each orbital has a different value of magnetic quantum number yes so here we are on our third quantum number for understanding the existence of electron within that atom so what is that it is called as magnetic quantum number and it is denoted by ml okay and each orbital can accommodate maximum of two electrons see the example here in case of p subshell electrons in p subshell form sta standing waves with two lobes pointing in opposite directions right so this three there are three orbitals within the p subshell that is px py and pz when i say px that means its lobes are aligned to the x axis when I say PY, lobes aligned to the Y axis and PZ means lobes aligned to the Z axis. Again, spherical harmonics set limitations on these values of magnetic quantum number as well. So, according to it, a subshell which are further subdivided into orbitals, those can have the values ranging from minus L to plus L. Okay, so when I say P subshell, P subshell means L is equal to 1. So, what would be the possible ML values then? It will be minus 1 to plus 1. So, the three possible values of ML would be minus 1, 0 and plus 1. Right? Now, after understanding the basic things related to the quantum numbers and the existing of electrons within a shell, subshell and subsequently in the orbitals, we will now come to know why 8 electrons. Let us try to understand this. Look at the third shell, n is equal to 3. So, n is equal to 3 can have 3 L values. L could be 0, 1 and 2. So, third shell would have 3 subshells. Okay. Now, when n is equal to 3 and L is equal to 0, that means we are talking about a 3s orbital right so that is a 3s orbital 3s subshell i'm sorry it's a 3s subshell i can say when i say it is a 3s subshell that means it has a single orbital as it has been defined by ml values so since l is equal to 0 and ml can have ranging from minus l to plus l that means it would be a single orbital right and a single orbital can accommodate at the most two electrons so it can accommodate two electrons the next one l is equal to 3 l is equal to 1 it would be designated as 3p subshell now 3p subshell would further have three orbitals and since three orbitals so 3 into 2 it can accommodate six electrons at the most the third one third subshell there n is equal to 3, l is equal to 2, what would it be called as? It is 3d subshell and d subshell has 5 orbitals. Why 5 orbitals? Because d subshell has ml values ranging from minus 2 to plus 2. 
So, I will just write it down here. So, for d case it would be minus 2, minus 1, 0, plus 1, plus 2. So, there are total 5 orbitals. Each orbital can accommodate maximum of 2 electrons. So, 5 into 2 would be 10 electrons here. Right? So, what would be the total capacity of electrons for the third shell? Just count it. So, it is 10 plus 6 plus 2 that is 18 electrons. So, the total capacity becomes 18 electrons in case of third shell when n is equal to 3. Right? Now, let us look at the energy point of view now. See, all electrons in a subshell have the same energy, but different subshells will have different energies. Now, looking at this energy concept, now the question comes, where would the electrons go? So, electrons will occupy the lowest energy states available, right? So, low the L values, less would be the corresponding energy and hence those would be filled first, okay? Now, if you look at the L values, which are the L values which are having lower energies, the lower L values are 0 and 1, okay? So, 0 is with reference to S subshell and 1 is with reference to P subshell, right? And since the N values are less, energy would be less and so electrons will prefer first to get occupied within the S subshell and the P subshell, right? Now, that is the basic reason. See, when I say 8 electrons have been filled, 8 electrons have been filled in which shell? Those have been filled with reference to S and P shells. And then why S and P subshells? That is because they have lower L values, right? So, they would be filled first. Now, let us conclude now as in total. So, we can say an atom with less than 8 electrons in its valence shell prefer to occupy S or P valence subshells. Now, the question comes, what will happen when the subshells are full? There are still other valence subshells available, but those will be of higher energy states. Okay? So, the atom will in a way resist to get more electrons in their valence shells. Yes or no? What we are trying to say? Because L value uh, corresponding to S and P is low, their energy is low, electrons will be getting filled up within this so that 8 electrons get completed with reference to S and P valence subshells. But if the subshells are already full and the electrons want to enter, they will in a way try to resist themselves because the other uh, subshells would be of higher energies. They are not going to prefer the higher energy subshells. Okay? So, in fact, the shifting of the energy levels caused by L is so extreme that after 8 electrons, the shells start to overlap. And that's the reason if all the subshells up to 3p are filled up, then the next lowest energy available for a new electron is in the 3d subshell. It is 4s. Do you remember? When you write down the electronic configuration, you have observed it many times that a new electron would be filled up in 4s and not in 3d. The main reason is this, because s orbitals have preferably lower energy. So, to maintain their stabilities, electrons will try to prefer the lower energy subshells. Right? Let us take an example for this to make it more clear. When we go from argon to potassium, right, you must have observed 18 and this is 19 atomic number. So, if you look at the electronic configuration of this, electron is added to the fourth shell within the potassium, 4s subshell. Even though there is a room available in the third shell, so when the argon is completed filling, 18 electrons have been filled, right? After that, the next subshell available for us is 3D. But electron doesn't prefer to enter in 3D. Instead, it prefers to enter, move into the 4S. 
shell, right? So we can say the shells really do stop feeling, filling up at 8 electrons since they can create a stronger bond to the nucleus and there is an associated low energy state. I hope it is clear. Thank you for watching.